and welcome once again to the podcast and YouTube channel of Jane Zander. Tonight on The Midnight Man with Jane Zander, we have two more stories for your listening pleasure. Without further ado, let us now welcome Jada. Hello, and once again, welcome to The Midnight Man with Jaden Zander. I'm Jaden, and in this Season 3, Episode 2, what else? I have two more stories for your listening pleasure tonight. Um, so, uh, without further ado, let us go to story number one. For the first story, this uh, was shared to me by one of my listeners, uh, Muhammad Amin, who shared his experience while working as a luge uh, sky ride operator at Sentosa and his story goes like this this encounter experience happened way back in November 2009 back then I was working as a luge sky ride operator at Sentosa it was closing time roughly around 9 p.m. after a tiring day it was a weekend all I had to do was to collect all the leftovers, rubbish and also helmets which were thrown down or came loose onto the luge track by the customers. There were two of us to close the track, but to save time and go home early, one of us closed the sky ride, whereby the other, and that is myself, closed the track. Okay, the story begins. After ensuring that no more customers were on the track via the video camera and colleagues stationed at the end of the track, the track light had to be dimmed to orange to signal it was closed for the day. I was at the track on my luge going down the first turn and using the tongs provided to pick up some tissue into the black plastic bag. Upon the second turn, there are some helmets under this huge tree. I parked my luge at the side and slowly walked to the tree. I noticed that there was this long white cloth dangling on a tree just above these helmets. I picked up the helmets and placed them onto the black plastic bag. Thinking that the white cloth dangling was another rubbish, I decided to pull at it. But just as I stepped right in front of the white cloth, I heard an eerie evil laugh right on top of the tree. I looked up at that tall tree and what I saw gave me the chills down my spine. I saw a totally dark colored burnt face skeleton like squatting on a tree branch, slowly turning its head towards me. I quickly looked down and tried to run away, but I just can't do anything at all. I just stood there, frozen for a good 10 seconds. After I composed myself, with my head still facing the ground, I walked shakily to my luge cart. I was sweating all over and my body was shaking from the shock. Once I'm back at the luge, I sat and tried to use the walkie-talkie to call my friend out. But the walkie was giving me those sandy sounds. I took out my handphone from my pocket, but there was no signal. I was lost. Should I run up to the colleague or should I speed down the track with my luge? I chose the latter, which was to speed down the track. All this while, my eyes were facing downwards and was still shaking. With a few words of prayers, I sped down the track going at 60 km per hour without thinking of my safety. But thank God I made it down the track safely. My supervisor saw me and asked me why I was shaking and looking so pale. I cried. 
just cried. Yes, I cried. I was so scared and feeling lost at that moment. After that, I was down with fever for a week and I only worked the opening shift till 5 p.m. And that is my story. Well, that is the story by Amin, uh, one of our listeners who contributed his story Well, while he was working as a luge uh, uh, operator at Sentosa Island. Well, if any of you have been to the luge uh, 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 park at Sentosa, you might have known uh, how fun it is to be going down the luge. But then again, when the sun goes down, it's a totally different story. So, <laughs> with that, we shall go to story number two. All right, this a second story. Um, it's going to be a quite a short one. Right, and uh, this happened to uh, one of my uncles uh, when he was younger, um, working and uh, staying in Tampanese. All right, and uh, okay, the story goes like this this uncle of mine, um, he works, and uh, whenever he works, uh, he will always come back late at night when everybody's already asleep. So, um, it's been normal. Uh, he, on this particular day, it was his working day and um, again he came home late so um, he got through the main door I mean he got home he got through the main door and uh, he uh, walked through the living room and into the kitchen uh, but the whole house is dark as everybody's already in bed so this uncle of mine what he did uh, was uh, he switched on uh, the lights in the kitchen but what he saw shocked him shocked him a lot all right um, this is what he saw once he switched on the light he saw that there is this huge hand on the kitchen counter top right it's it, the, the weird thing is that it was just a hand there's no torso there's no arm there's nothing it was just a huge big hands dark colored black hands hairy and that okay so it was a dark colored huge it was like but it was like a bear paw um huge hands with uh fur and uh he was shocked and he he kind of like blinked his eyes his eyes and that thing just disappeared and that was the first and the last time he saw that thing on the kitchen counter that night or every every other night okay that was the that was the last time that he saw that thing and um he did uh, inform my late grandma and uh, my late grandma said that it might be um just something that followed him back from work and that is story number two. And those are the two stories for tonight. I do hope that you enjoyed uh, tonight's stories. Uh, of course, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Muhammad Amin for uh, contributing his story. And if any one of you out there have any horror or mystical stories or ghost cool stories to share with me, please do email me. Uh, and the email address is right below, right? And uh, please do comment, uh, like, share, and also press uh, the bell because you will receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So um, with that, uh, once again, I'd, I'd like to thank all of you for uh, being with me all the way till now, season three, episode two, and I will be back next week with more stories for your entertainment pleasure with that let me say good night
this is the voice saying, I'm going to lose.